Hey folks, welcome to Advisory. Happy Thursday. Congratulations. You made it to the end of a short but very eventful week. Today's video is going to cover a few things that we need to talk about regarding resetting some expectations. We've had the first nine weeks to get to know each other again, to kind of understand the systems of the school a little bit better, to start our classes. And now we really want to take a look back at some of the things that we went over in How to Be a Longhorn, or as I like to call it, How to Be a Longhorn. Longhorn. And we're even going to go over some things that How to Be a Longhorn did not cover that we want to make you aware of now. Two things that I wanted to make you aware of and remind you of are tardies and ID badges. You're going to hear a lot more from the adults in the building about tardies and ID badges. So, so let's just be clear on the expectations here. The first suggestion to avoid tardies that I have is to be on time to class. What a concept. Go straight from class to class. That's all you really have time to do in five minutes. We've got a really big building, and so make sure that you are doing everything you can to walk quickly to class and get there as soon as you can. The second thing might be a little bit more of an adjustment, and sometimes teachers remember and sometimes they don't, and so it can be confusing going from class to class, but generally speaking, no one should be in the bathroom the first or last 10 minutes of class. So please do not go to the bathroom first, go straight to your class, and then 10 minutes into the class, you can ask your teacher for the pass. From here on out, we're going to start pulling students that have multiple tardies, and those students will receive a lunch detention depending on how many tardies they have, as well as a call home. Please, please, please get to class on time. All right, that's the only way that you're going to learn what you need to learn, and it's really the quickest way to graduate. The next thing you're going to hear a lot more from the adults in the building is to remember to wear your ID badge all day, every day. You have to wear it around your neck or on your shirt with a clip where it is plainly visible to people passing by in the hallways. If you have lost your ID, they are $5 in the front office. Everyone should have started with two. And we'll let you know that if you forget your ID at home multiple times, it will result in a call home, a meeting with your assistant principal, and possible other disciplinary measures. Please make an effort to make wearing your ID badge every day a priority to you. Just like you should never come to school without shoes or pants, you should also not come to school without an ID badge. And again, we don't say this just because we like telling you what to do. We do it for building safety. Okay, the next few things I have to talk about we actually haven't talked about in a video before. Now, most of you that are watching this video are not doing the things that I'm about to go over, but there have been enough instances of these things happening that we thought it important to tell you what will happen if you choose to make these choices. Specifically, we're gonna talk about smoking and vaping in the bathroom, setting fires and pulling fire alarms, fighting and assault, or even threats of assault, and a few more specific reminders about cars that are parked here in the student parking lot. All right, let's get this out of the way. Everybody knows that people go into the bathroom and smoke or vape. Sometimes it's nicotine, a lot of the times it's THC of some kind. You know it, I know it. Some of you may be high right now. And if you are, I just want to say this. Everyone knows. Everyone in your class knows. You may think that nobody knows, but I gotta tell you. Everyone knows. I mean, come on, do you think I've lived 30 years on God's green earth and I don't know the difference between the smell of a regular bathroom and one that someone smoked in? So, now that we all know that, I wanted to go over some health risks and some disciplinary risks of vaping and smoking in the bathroom here at WTY. Let's talk about just nicotine and THC. I know there are other things out there, you shouldn't do those either, but these are the main two. First of all, just nicotine alone is incredibly addictive. I have a few friends that have been addicted to drugs in their time and they all say without question that cigarettes and nicotine is the hardest thing to quit out of all of them. Regardless of which chemical it is, it could impair the growth of your developing prefrontal cortex. That's right up here, that's the part of the brain that helps you make decisions. Our prefrontal cortexes don't finish developing until we are 25, sometimes longer. Your respiratory system, anywhere from your lungs to your throat, can be irreparably damaged by chemicals and sometimes even metal in smoke and vapor. That's metal in, in your, your lungs. lungs. If you take these chemicals for a long time, especially when you're young and your brain is still developing, it could impair the way that you learn, how your coordination is, how you think, and how you solve problems. It can also lead to difficulty in regulating your own emotions as you develop and as you grow. As for THC, it can lead to dependence on it or other psychoactive drugs. You've heard it probably for a long time. Oh, weed actually isn't addictive. The crazy thing about weed is that it's actually not addictive. Wrong. First of all, anything can be addictive, okay? You can get addicted to Cap'n Crunch. 
Addiction is just a learned behavior that it's very difficult to get out of. And so if you teach your brain to take in THC all the time, then your brain is going to want to latch onto either it or even stronger drugs in the future. THC can also, in some people, lead to permanent mental health damage. And those are just the health effects. If a student is caught vaping or smoking in school, they are subjected to an on-campus disciplinary hearing. The first offense will land you in DAEP, which is the alternative school, for 20 days. A second or further offense will land you in DAEP for an additional 30 days. So hey, look here. Stop it. Cut it out. Be kinder to your body and stay out of trouble. All right, enough of that. Let's move on to a lighter subject, arson. You should know what happens to students that decide to either set fires in school or pull fire alarms. If you set a fire in the school or to any school property or anything inside or outside, it's called arson and you don't deal with DISD, you deal directly with the police. Both setting a fire and pulling a fire alarm when there is no fire are a felony. If you're convicted of this felony and you're 16 and below, you go to juvenile detention. And in the state of Texas, if you're 17 and above, you're tried as an adult and you go to real jail. Like, prison prison. So please do not set fire to anything in the school, like, I don't know, toilet paper or an actual toilet. We are all sick of doing fire drills. <sighs> okay, fighting. When it comes to fighting in school, the consequences vary depending on the circumstances of the fight. The first time that you participate in a fight, there is documentation, there is counseling, you go to the reset center possibly, you definitely get a call home. If it's your second or more fight of the actual year, you, you go to DAEP, the alternative school, for however long that your principal decides based on how bad the fight was. I will say this, if the fight causes a school disruption, meaning that a bunch of people are coming in to watch the fight and there's a big mob that the adults in the room have to take care of, there are heavier consequences that will be implemented to the students involved. Which leads me to another point that I need to make to the entire school, which is, hey, don't gather around people that are fighting. It doesn't do them any good, it doesn't do any of the rest of the school any good, and it makes the whole situation much, much more unsafe. You see somebody fighting, Tell somebody if nobody's already on the scene, but otherwise, mind your business and go to class. So if two or more people are involved in an altercation, that is a fight. But if it's just one person against another person that doesn't fight back, that is assault. And for assault or threats of violence, you go to DAEP and criminal charges may be pressed from the victim. Assault can range everywhere from class C misdemeanors to a class A felony, depending on the severity of the assault. Typically, if someone comes away with severe injuries from an assault, they up it to a class A felony, which again is outside of DISD's control and in the hands of the criminal justice system. Threats of violence made to students or staff will also result in a DAEP placement, plus other possible disciplinary measures depending, again, on its severity. A threat of violence can be as vague as, just wait until after school. Or it can get really, really specific whenever you tell what you're going to do to them whenever you catch them in a corner. Don't do that, all right? The more severe and more specific the threat is, the more likely you are to get charged for it. All right, finally, let's talk about cars on campus. If you drive to school and park your car in the student parking lot, you must have a real license to drive from the state of Texas, or another state if you moved from out of state. The vehicle that you park in the parking lot must also be street legal, which means it has to have its insurance, its registration up to date, and the window tents can't be over the legal limit. Officers may issue tickets to those parked in the student parking lot for those infractions, and for minors, parents may also be charged, especially if you don't have a license to drive. Once students have parked their cars in the student parking lot and come into the building, they may not go back out to their car for any reason during the school day, unless, of course, you're being let out early, and that goes through the office. The gates of the student parking lot will remain locked between arrival and the time where early dismissal lets out. All right, I know that was some heavy stuff, but I wanna reiterate that most of us in this school are not doing those things. It's just that whenever these things are not kept up with, things can get pretty dangerous at school pretty quick. I wanna see you stay out of trouble. Your teachers wanna see you stay out of trouble. We want you to be healthy and we want school to be a safe place for everyone to be. That's all from me for today. Advisors, you can go to the next slide and have the discussion there. Be good to yourself and others, and I'll see you real soon. Enjoy the long weekend.